I haven't been as productive with my works and paper or installations for the past year but I've been writing quite a lot more and also reading um, I went back to the old pen and paper and uh, instead of drawing I decided to keep writing and this is a little bit of what uh, a little taste of what I've been writing and thinking this one is titled WWW Windows as Ways of World Making Caught in the window net Wonder worry window world Could have fallen but here we go Window chain Window lights creating a sense of place Resilience Resistance and accountability Windows as ways of world making Solidarity and change Maybe we can re-exist in a culture of care Our lives in each other's arms Every day soft and extreme violence Connected slash disconnected A call to constructive reciprocity a regulating window frame linking all human transactions, interactions, and agreements. Window life, each opening leads to a new possibility. Windows for mutual support, sources of light for communities in the short and long term. Hi, my name is Michelle Cho, and my two sculptures, Comfort and 110 Days, will be on view at the TSA location in Philly. Um, prior to the pandemic, I've always been thinking about ventilation and air only because of the toxicity and the materials that I was using to sculpt with. But the pandemic has kind of unveiled a new form of invisibility of air for me. And well, for example, I use public transportation um, systems a lot or Ubers um, to get around the city. And I've noticed as the pandemic kind of progressed that the Uber drivers were creating makeshift partitions for themselves to serve as protective barriers between them and many unknown passengers that they were driving for that day. And I think that seeing that separation of intimate space so physically was one of the most influential inspirations that kind of allowed me to use that same material language um, from the Uber drivers and using it to kind of translate it into my own sculpture practice. And I was working out of my family car for some quiet time and using the energy purely sourced from the vehicle to inflate or either charge my sculptures. But for now, I'm kind of working inside of my living room in Philadelphia. Um, I'm someone who works quite well between the hours of 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. So to not have accessible studio space between those set hours that I feel most comfortable um, generating work in has been the most challenging part for me creatively. Um, luckily, and I feel so blessed that personally that I have not had my family members or my loved ones be affected by um, COVID as strongly as those um, you know, has lost loved ones from it. And right now the apartment is now fully my studio space. And this transition has really allowed me to study air and invisible spaces within my own home um, a little bit more critically. And right now I'm in the process of building systems that utilize water or electricity from the apartment building as an activator or as a medium into part of my sculptures. And I am in the stages of kind of figuring out ways for these sculptures to exist post pandemic. But for now, I think that these sculptures are kind of existing as sketches to a possible larger conversation that I have yet to kind of insert myself into.
My name is Callie Banks, and I was born and raised in Syracuse, New York, but I am currently based in Boulder, Colorado. I've been here for the past three years working on my Master of Fine Arts in Interdisciplinary Media Arts Practices. My area is photography, but I teach in the digital art department, so I kind of float between those two areas. This is my studio on CU Boulder's campus. There's a black backdrop, a green screen, a camera, a sewing machine, a place to paint film, and a big open space in the center for performances. I lost a lot of access to facilities on CU Boulder's campus once the pandemic started, so I moved a studio space into my very tiny kitchen area where you can see, again, a green screen, a reflector, some metal smithing tools, and just different things that I could bring home from my studio. In my work, I explore the reclamation of identity through performative photography and videography. This duly explores the ideas of public versus private narratives, which acts as a catalyst for discourse addressing the familial and the feminine. Once the pandemic started, I decided to start utilizing the spaces in my apartment to work and to show my work. So here I projected onto the ceiling and the walls of my living room. I've created work in my bathroom and I've also created work in my bedroom. The first clip of this video is actually taken in my bathtub. And as we move into the last portion of this video, I created this by projecting onto the walls of my bedroom and I can be seen jumping on my bed to document this performance. Hey all, my name is Eric Rivera Arbeito and this is uh, my studio and my studio practice. Um, my work is uh, primarily focused on the relationship between Puerto Rico and the United States and exploring that relationship. Um, and yeah, this is some of my work from my current work or the work in progress. Um, a lot of this work I've started um, throughout the past year. Some of it dates back to March or April around the time I was furloughed. Um, needless to say, last year, you know, this past year has been very difficult for everyone. Um, and it's been challenging in terms of our intake of media and, and just trying to keep up with events. Um, and it almost feels like, you know, week by week, we almost live in a new reality. So I, I feel like a lot of the work that's come out of the last year has been really fragmented. Um, and I could definitely show, it definitely shows up in the work. Um, lately, uh, I've been sort of exploring the concept of manifest destiny in regards to the United States foreign policy and how... Uh, this country's foreign policy sort of is a big contributor to climate change in terms of its military presence around the world. Um, so yeah, it, you can kind of see some stuff like that, primarily like Banquecito, which is in, in the show, is is sort of a very direct uh, um, sort of manifestation of that idea and sort of those explorations. Um, but yeah, this is, this is uh, my, you know, small corner where I get to do my work for the time being and i um, really happy to be in the show and thank you. My name is Malik John Mark Purvis. I'm a student over at um, Cranbrook Academy of Art at the moment. I'm in my last year of studying sculpture and one of the biggest things has been just the access to space and time that's changed. The, it, it, it's changed so much that it's changed how I make my work. Um, I think it's been really sobering making art in these times, mainly because it's a little bit different to um, encounter the world at the, on a very basic level. I work very um, 
close and directly with my uh, sitters and and directly with the environment so it becomes really difficult for you to kind of imagine a world where um, longer more drawn out pieces are made when COVID hit I was primarily just focused on making portraits um, because I felt that they had the most direct answer towards speaking towards the mental ill if we're going to be listening to them and interpreting their voices it would have been the most direct way to do that and so I would normally make these over a very long period of time these lasting sometimes between months and years of communication um, over uh, you know established rapport I, I was working on a series um, of work dedicated to one individual that I was meeting over the course of several months where we would talk meet reconvene and talk about um, the mental status that she was maintaining but the summer really cut that off I think that's one of the biggest times where you know as it was beginning I was do we wear a mask where do we meet can we meet and um, this was mainly um, an issue because I'm in Bloomfield Hills at the moment but when COVID hit I was in Chicago and I was staying with my family um, I think that was the biggest decision that I had to have made then and the most crucial one to for the sake of you know everyone around me including myself was to go home and so I spent a lot of my time hiking um, you know it was through hiking that it was you know a way of therapy a way of dealing with everything and also personally a way for me to kind of get out of my comfort zone and allow myself to really just you know walk around um, but it was through a how it was through um, mainly through hiking that I began to realize that there's a creative potential in nature to really be found again I found it really boring to think of landscapes at this period of time and when I was looking in the landscape I would notice um, that you know my dissociation what I saw in other people's uh, dissociations were blown up to such a degree that you know you couldn't really say that it was really you know an experience that you were having or if you were doing a reality check I, I think that's one of the biggest moments where with people with mental illness is that they do this reality check where is that the thing that I saw is that just something that I am making up in my head um, and you know the one of the most clarifying moments is there's another person there to make it really sure that that's something that you've seen um and so what i've been painting um as a result has been these um responses to what was the swampy uh marshland that is in chicago it's mostly mostly swamp very much swampy um to the point where post first rain it was only puddles, branches, this kind of mass of, um, of branches that would, you know, form over a long period of time. And I was using that as a way to talk about how it was disorienting, how to reorient yourself. I think that's probably also something that could apply to both being inside and outside during all of this. Um, but my primary reaction was to actually switch internally, um, try to figure out how I work internally and to internalize that. I also want to say it is 1120 and this portion is written in a little less more intuitive. Um, I'm sitting in a 12 by foot 12 by 15 foot room and one of the biggest things that I realized as a college student is you know this rationing of time and space um, I'm allotted a very specific space someone else is allotted a very specific space when I go into um, the studios at school we are all um, very much cordoned off in our own spaces and thinking about what to do in terms of all of those spaces, freedom means nature. Freedom means walking around. Freedom means being able to see those things. And those are only being 
are only really given to us during the time, daylight time. And so time is something that you kind of have to rationalize with yourself and ration off to see the real world. It's really through landscape painting that 12 feet by 15 feet for me at the current moment um, becomes a field of infinite possibilities. One where I can make landscape, interpret that landscape, and see myself in the world again. And that's been really the biggest crucial thing I think everyone has probably needed to see is what was the world and what is the world look like out there anymore? Especially since we're not encouraged to leave our homes, to um, reconvene with other people, to uh, go out and eat. What, what, what does the world look like and what was it like before all of this? Um, and we can't speak of it as a liminal space anymore. This liminal space is now our home for better or worse.